So in the previous session, we were looking at the at some of the issues related with the geobinary signal. And we saw that in one example, we could understand that there is what is called as an issue related to the propagation of error. So one of the bit is in error, right? Uh, on the receiver side, if you receive one of the bits with error, so definitely that means uh, all the other bits, right? Uh, as error because the error propagates. All right, so now say, let's look at the, the solution of this problem okay so so the solution comes whenever you try to add a, a pre-coding technique to the geo binary conversion right so this is called as pre-coded Geo binary scheme. All right, so now let, let's directly look at the block diagram representation. So let us say we have the incoming signal uh, in the form of binary representation that is BK. Right, so what we do now initially we use a specific uh, adder block. This is not a normal adder block. This is a modulo adder block. Okay, I will talk about that. So, what we do, we perform a pre coding technique. So, the input goes, input BK goes to this, and this provides you an output. Let us say the second part actually comes from a different section, but we'll come back to that. So, let's say this output that we get at the output of this modulo uh, adder, modulo 2 adder as AK. And the same thing is actually fed back as the second uh, this thing, but we uh, apply a delay over there. Delay of one bit duration, that is TB. Okay, take a delay from where sorry. Okay, so what we do now is so we add this uh, from this point we'll take a take out the same signal and give it to the delay and uh, from the delay part right a delayed signal is fed back to this. Adder. So we have two inputs to the modulo 2 adder. So we'll write this is mod 2 operation that is being done over here. So this is a mod 2 addition. Okay. Then uh, let's uh, we'll be giving this to the after this whatever we studied earlier will that means I'll show you uh, the the block diagram that is for this. Block. Right, so after this, it pro it continues. Right, so then we have this, this, and this. Right, so that will club together. Out of which the duo binary conversion and the ideal channel will follow that. Then we have the normal uh, sampling. Okay, all these things will follow. Right, so anyway, we, you don't have to write that now because anyway we know what it is. So simply we'll write a block here. That is so we have a geo binary it's a geo binary conversion filter That's the filter, and uh, anyway, we have the channel followed by this. Uh, let me skip that part. 
and then we have the sampling part. Okay, so we have the sampler and we get the output, say CQ. This is output. So this is going to touch this point and go back at every t is equal to tb, the sampling duration. Right. So every t equal to tb, I can write a ktb just to make it more clear. T is equal to k into tb. Right. K is equal to one, two, three, four, one, zero. Okay. Now. Let's uh, let's do that, right? So this is the uh, simple precoder. Now, now we add a part called as a precoder, right? So let me highlight the precoder part here. That is input this and this part. Till here, this is the addition, right? Additional block which we have added, and this block is what is called as the precoder. Pre-coder, right? So now let us try to uh, analyze what exactly is going to happen from here. So let's try to write the pre-coded binary sequence. That is a k, right? So in this particular block, we have the additional part that is called as the pre-coder. So the pre-coded binary. binary sequence that is denoted by AK. AK is equal to, we can see that it is simply we have the BK values coming up. To that, I perform a modulo 2 addition with AK minus 1, right? Because it's a past value with the delay. AK I have. So what I get here, I'll write this is AK minus 1. That you are simply trying to add. Now the if you remember the modulo 2 addition, it's a simple binary addition with only one bit is considered. Like, like if, I, if I have 0 plus 0, that will be 0, right? So 0 plus 1 is 1. At the same time, 1 plus 0 is also 1. But if you write 1 plus 1, that is going to be 0. 1 goes out. That is not considered because I'm still doing the only bit 1. Okay, one bit can. So it's something like your XOR bit. So you can see that, right? That kind of representation. Right. Now let us try to represent this particular pre-coded answer in the port in, in, in polar form. So polar means if you add one plus one, it becomes two and so on. Right? Whenever BK is equal to zero or BK is equal to one, it depends on the uh, specific type of uh, the coding. So let's try to write. So if the symbol at the output of the precoder, right, is represented in, say, polar. If I have the polar form, right, then we will understand that this is the possible equation. The CK will be equal to either you get plus or minus 2, right, whenever the BK is equal to 0, okay. Otherwise, this is going to be B, whenever the BK is equal to 1, you get this kind of representation. It's obvious, right, because you are trying to represent in what format? In polar form, correct. So, if at all it is 0, BK was 0, right. Let's check out this. If at all the BK is equal to 0, modulo 2 operator, so it is polar format. So the CK, final value of CK becomes equal to, because yeah, I have a dual binary conversion after that. So if the value is equal to 0, right, precoder will be, the, the dual binary conversion filter will make it as either plus 2 or minus 2. Okay. At the same time, if at all it is 0, the dual binary conversion will make it as 0 at the output. Right, BK is equal to 1, the CK becomes equal to 0. This is what we have to do. Anyway, once again, we are going to solve a simple problem to understand the whole concept. Okay, now what happens? We'll go to the uh, uh, detector side.
So this is what is the transmitter side. Let's look at the de detector. All right. So uh, the detector. All right. What we do? We have the CK with us. I want to get back to BK. Right. So what we do? Normally we take the rectifier which takes the magnitude of ck minus 2 and plus 2 becomes as will be considered as 2 over here so what we have we have a block called as a rectifier okay there is a rectifier then the rectifier basically converts my ck into the sequence with the magnitude of ck as the output so rectifier means you know that right we have half wave, full wave rectifiers. All the negative values either will be converted to zero or positive, right? It's like that. Okay, so that's the one rectifier followed by I have a threshold detector. In a sense, you use a threshold value. Above that, you can assign to some value. Below that will be the different one. Okay, so this is output of this detector itself will be the approximated value we call it as a pk cap so closely bk cap will be equal to bk this is what we have seen in the previous case right all right so now we'll see how this method this is a simple detector whatever comes in it will perform a rectification uh, you get a magnitude of that then compare it with the threshold detector which will compare the input with the threshold to get the output all right Okay, now let us try to uh, look at this with the help of an example. Okay, now let us start with the uh, binary input sequence that is denoted as BK. I'll write this example. So BK is the input data stream. So let me assume that this is zero. 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. Okay, I slightly made the right side up. This is this. Okay, so this is the BK record. Now, after that, I need a pre coding. Right, so because you see here the second step is a pre coding. Right, so how do you get perform the pre coding? Pre coded output is ak. Right, this ak is equal to the current bk, current value, perform a modulo 2 addition with ak minus 1. Okay, just directly derived from the block diagram we have. Right, for this, I need to assume something previous to this because ak minus 1 should be always you start with 0. Okay, this is this is what <clears throat> you will assume. Okay, I think I have to reduce the space here. Just one second, I'll slightly reduce this. Let's do one thing. Okay, let me move this. Closer to this. It's like this. This and uh, let me move this to the left. Okay. Now, actually, I need to write what is ak minus 1, the previous value, because current value starts here. But I need a previous value, so you assume that to be 0, right? This is the previous value. I have to assume this, okay? There is no other option. Always you need to assume the first value. You can assume, like, maybe 0 or 1, doesn't matter. So I'll say 0. This is what we assume. I'll write here so that you can assume. So assume the zero value. Now you start the calculation. Okay, so this it's XOR with the zero, right? So this and this you perform the XOR operation and write. So zero, zero will be a zero. Once again, zero, zero, zero. 
then you see 0, 1 is 1, 1, 1 is 0, 0, 0 is a 0, 0, 1 is 1, 1, 0 is a 1, okay, 1, 0 will be 1, 1, 1 is 0, okay, all right. Now, once you have this, next is the polar version because you see just now we said that if at all it is polar. So, this is polar AK, perform the AK into polar. So, we know that 0 becomes, I will even include the assumed version, okay, assumed value. So, this is minus 1, right, then we have minus 1, minus 1, this is plus 1, minus 1, minus 1. Plus one, plus one, plus one, and minus one. Okay, so this is the polar version of AK. Right, now you see uh, the encoder's output is what we have to calculate. So that is what I am going to call this as. So CK, right? So you see the CK is denoted as. Now I have AK as the input to this. So it becomes simply AK plus AK minus 1. Correct? Because previously we had BK over there. Now BK is inside the precoder block. Correct? So what goes into the duo binary signaling itself is AK. So AK, you remember AK and AK minus 1 were added. Correct? So you see it means minus 1, minus 1 will be added together to get my next answer. So minus 2. Right? So once again, minus 2. Are you okay? So just a second. I think we minus one, minus two. Okay, so only the first value we are adding them together to get this, right? So a k and a k minus one. So next value will become minus one, minus one. So let's do the normal addition. So this is minus one, minus one minus 2, then this will be minus 1 plus 1, so 0, next 1, plus 1, minus 1, so 0, minus 1, minus 1, minus 2, then we have 0, okay, then we have plus 2, plus 2, right, and 0, are you okay with this? This is the output of the uh, thing. So what we do now, what is the output on the receiver side? Receiver side's output will be, right, if it is negative, right, how do you, how do you convert the receiver's output? What's the method to convert the output value? Just now you see, you have seen, right? Uh, so, the detector, you get a CK value, right? Rectify that and the threshold will be. Okay, so uh, it will be rectified. So, I have the receiver's output. So, this is what I called as receiver's output. So, whenever I have a uh, minus 2, right? That will be converted. It's, it's a threshold, it's a rectified value. It's a right. If it is below minus 2, it will be going to be 0. Okay, so minus 2. Let us say it is 0. So 0 becomes 1. This is 1. Minus 2 becomes 0. Right. So 0 is converted into 1. Plus or minus 2 will be converted into 0 itself. Okay, so 2 is also 0. 0 becomes equal to 1. All right, so this is how it, this is the normal calculation. Okay, so you have the sequence pk given. Now you see, you receive the same thing as the output. That's fine. No, no problem with this because even the normal uh, duo binary also gave us this. Now it should have some advantage, right? As we discussed earlier, because uh, there was a problem of error uh, propagating through, right? So. Now we can say that yes, this is good only if I am able to show you that error is not going to propagate. 
all right so let's see that let us assume that there is an error right okay for that reason so i'll just copy this so that i can so this is the normal calculation right and i want to show that i want to show that the error is not going to propagate for that reason i'll copy the same thing Okay, so have you noted down? I'll change here because it's not getting copied. Some issue with that, right? So this is okay. You, you want uh, some time to copy this, or are you okay with this? Okay, so let's see. Let's. I, I'll just modify it here itself. Okay, what happens? Let's assume that uh, I got one bit in error. So that is, I'll show you the errors at uh, say it's the second location. Why, due to some mistake, say this is right uh, due to the additional some issue right when you receive it so this is received as a zero correct so when that is received as zero what happens to this zero means it is one right decoded as one okay so zero is decoded as one so you see this is the error But this has nothing to be, do with the next calculation. Okay. So anyway, there is a next minus one plus one will be always zero because polar AK is what you are using to do this calculation. So this plus this will not change. It still remains same. Correct. So you see your next values are not affected. Right. It's not going to propagate this error. Error is not going to propagate. Everything else will be intact. No change. One bit is in error means yes, only that bit will be in error so that your whole decoder output or the receiver output will not change. Okay, so that's the point I wanted to make. So if you have one error, only that digit will, uh, will be affected. So that's the point which you need to make here. So I'll just write one point to justify. There is error during the during the transmission then the bit corresponding to that error will be affected but not the other bits in the sequence. This implies no error of the sequence 
no error propagation. So that's the whole point here. Okay, so there is no error propagation which is good. All right, so that's all about the pure binary signaling, which is correct inside the topic called as correlative coding. Right, this is again one of the methods, right? One of the simplest methods that can be used. Okay, so only that uh, has been added in your uh, particular syllabus, but there are many more things can be studied if it is. Okay, so let's move further. So the next topic is. The M array systems, or this can be M array baseband binary system, and any name is given, that's fine. So M array, I write baseband system, or even this is the same FAM system. Okay, so M array baseband FAM. Right. So again, this is actually one block diagram with an explanation. Right. Fine. So let's start with the uh, uh, writing up of the block diagram to start. So we have uh, the there is a binary stream ultimately which I want to send. Okay. So this is the input binary sequence denoted by a B K. So initially this is given to a block which performs the uh, modification of these bits into the pulses. So we call that as the pulse generator. There is a pulse generator. So the pulse will convert your binary sequence back into the pulse coded format. So let us try to call that as say X of T. So this is X of T. Now, so this is going to be the transmitter now. So the, the whole uh, characteristics of the transmitter, we try to represent it in the form of a filter. So we can call that as the Transmitting, transmitting filter that is H T of F. All right. Now you see this ultimately goes into the channel. Now you transmit this so that it can go to the appropriate channel and transmit it to the receiver. So this output will go to the channel. So let us try to call the channel's response HC of F. Right. Now after it passes through the channel, it will go to the receiver. So the response of the receiver will try to uh, call it by the name. Uh, say receiving filter so let's anyway you can write hr of what it requires let's write So this, now we know that it, uh, after the receiver performs some of the fundamental operations like amplification, etc., uh, uh, it, it has to be ultimately sampled, right? So now we'll write the sampling part. So comes here, and we have a sampling device. Let's try to denote the sampling device like 
this it's going to touch like this and it keeps moving like this at uh, t is equal to some i times maybe t okay so i can call the output here as a say all right here this is y of t the y of t becomes as soon as it comes at the output of this sampler it is only the samples right not all the values so i can call it as y of i times t that's what comes up now here we apply some logic this is a logic device it applies some logic normally it, it's, it, it will be a comparator so comparator means it's going to compare two values right one of the value will be a threshold value So there will be a, a threshold and the output here is the is the output binary sequence. Right. With the threshold, you compare the y of i to t, the sampled value, and you make a decision whether it is 1 or 0. Right? This is the general block diagram of a M array baseband system or a PAM system. Okay, so now there is a very minute difference between what we were considering so far, that was a binary baseband system. Now we have a M array system. Right? That is the, the fundamental uh, difference I will tell you. In binary system, you have only two values sent independently. That means zero is sent separately, one is sent as a separate symbol. So zero needs one level, the one needs another level. Right? So zero is a level, one is the other level. That's all. Only two levels to exist. Here. Okay, right. But when you say M array system, there are multiple levels possible. This is because you are not sending zeros and ones just as it is, right? You will club something like, let's say, I try to get a symbol. You don't send bits, you send symbols. For example, a symbol can contain, uh, let's assume that we try to get a symbol out of two bits. In the sense, two two bits clubbed together will be considered as a symbol. So, zero zero is a symbol. What are the other possibilities? I may get zero one, I may get one zero, or I may get one. Now you see, it's not just two levels. I need four different levels here, right? When you use something like this, right, it is called the m value is four. There are four levels, right? So this is m equal to four array, right? This is four array system. Next, if you try to club three three bits starting from zero 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 one, right, like up to one 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 you see that it is m equal to 8. I have 8 different symbols needed to transmit this. Okay, so this is 8 array system and so on. Okay, so if you send just 0 as one symbol, 1 as other symbol, this is not m array because m is just 2. 2 is, it's, it means it is binary. Right? So you see that the ary is still there. It's bin, right? Then ary. So binary. So, right? By 2, right? So you are doing with the 2. Right, but others are like this. Are you okay with that? Okay, let's come. Let let's look at the analysis of this. Right. So let me write one point here just to uh, elaborate what has been discussed so far. In a M array system, M array output. I'll directly write output. <coughs> Sorry, the X of T, which is the output of the pulse generator, of pulse generator, ha, okay, I'll write. Okay, I can write has itself. Okay. It has m levels. It has m 
different. Levels. Okay, now what are the different ampli amplitudes? Because 0 and 1 means we took something like this. This is plus A, this is minus A. So you represent this as 0, this as 1, something like this. Correct? This, these were the levels used in the final. But now I have M different cases. So you need to decide what are the various magnitudes or amplitude levels. Right? So each amplitude level at the pulse generator output corresponds to a different symbol because if you have eight different let us say values right or first let's get, let's take two different or only four cases right you may have four cases like one two three four like this is for zero zero or maybe it, it can be any other format also let me just write like this okay so maybe I'll change it to the amplitude property so say this is zero zero this is for zero one this is for 1, 0, this is for 1, 1. So magnitude could be this is 1, 3 volts, 1 volt, minus 1 volt, and minus 3 volts. You see, this is for m equal to 4. Isn't it? So you see, equally, they're, they're, they're spaced at, with uh, equal spaces. Isn't it? Right. So that, that, that point is important now. Right. How do you decide the magnitude? Right. So the amplitude. The amplitude level at the pulse generator's output, right, should correspond to distinct. symbol right so each symbol has its own amplitude level that's what is very important right now you see right uh, let us try to write the equation of the output of the pulse generator right normal equation which we already have come across only that capital a k value will be changing according to the right value you are trying to send okay so uh, before that, let me define something. So let it's not no more TB, right? Because there is no bit being transmitted. TB was a bit duration. Now it is no more bit duration, right? We will call let TB the symbol duration, right? So this TB, so this T, if you take inverse, you get what is called as the signaling rate. It is not symbol rate. Small change, that's all. Okay, signaling rate. So we have the signaling rate defined like this. Okay, now you write therefore cathode the output of the pulse generator. can be expressed as following okay this is x of t is equal to the summation k varying from minus infinity to plus infinity a k into g of now we see this is t minus k times capital t where the this all right let's write the terms one by one so what was AK? AK is a discrete value taken by the symbols. Okay. And this G is nothing but the rectangular pulse with amplitude is equal to 1 and the duration equal to capital T. So let's write the terms one by one so that it becomes very clear where right, the G of T, what is the G of T? It's a rectangular pulse. I'll just write rect pulse, rectangular pulse of unit amplitude. It 
it's a unity amplitude amplitude equal to one and duration equal to capital T that's what is the requirement for this right because well, within one pulse, you try to send one complete symbol. That's why that symbol duration should be satisfied. And a k is nothing but a k is the uh, it it contains of the discrete levels. Let's try to use a table to understand this. So a k is equal to let us say we have only three values. Okay, I'm I'm use I'm, I have only three levels. So if you have three levels, right? You can even include a zero as a level because I need three samples: one here, one here, and one here. Correct. But if four, if you need four different levels, I cannot include zero because if I include zero, right? I need four levels, right? How do you how do you distinguish? If you put one here, other two should go here, right? Or if you Try to put only one above zero. I have to put two more below zero. Correct. So that makes right. They are not equal. Right. So what we do, we try to define a specific method in which. Okay. Let let me hold on to this. I need them. Okay. So let's let's. See. What happens when four uh, levels are there? What happens when three levels are there? We'll try to bifurcate them uh, by checking whether there are even number of levels or odd number of levels. Okay, so a k is equal to this is this is something like this. This is you have plus or minus a, plus or minus three a, plus or minus five a, and so on, right? If this is the point, if m is an even number, like m equal to four. At the same time, if you have odd number, you will include zero also. Zero, plus or minus two a, plus or minus four a. And so on. This is when the m takes odd value. Now you check whatever I mentioned. So just check what I mentioned earlier. Right? Whenever three levels are there, this is zero. There is a a and minus minus a. So a a can be taken as one. So minus one, zero, and one are your three levels. Okay. But when you see you have even a uh, odd number. Sorry, the, what I told is for odd numbers. Sorry, this is what zero plus a and minus. Now you see, if you have uh, the even number, then zero cannot be included. Zero should not be present, right? You should have other values like two values above, two values below. So how do you di differentiate that? This is there is a, a minus a, three a, correct, and minus three. Okay, so. You can just like do. Sorry, the previous one was for odd. This has to be minus plus two a and minus two. Okay, take any value for a; it will work. A can be taken as half, so that it becomes one and minus one. All right. So ultimately, zero will be included when there are odd numbers of levels, and uh, it whenever m is considered as even number, like you have to have plus or minus a, plus or minus three a, five a, and so on. Zero is not included. Okay, so that equal points are present above and below the axis. Okay, all right. Now let us try to generate a, uh, a required pulse shape here. Okay, so so this is right. Let's try to generate a four array system. Let's try to plot. This is example of a sequence. The sequence, binary sequence, could be something like uh, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. Right? So, anyway, you can choose for a 3 array or something. So, since the length is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, so better we go for, right? Uh, Four array system because every two I can club together to get right one symbol, right? So represent this using four array system, right? Definitely, it can be a four array representation. So when there are four levels, right? 
what are your levels that you are going to write? So 4 means it is plus or minus a and plus or minus 3a. Are you okay with that? There are 4 levels, right? The next 6 levels means you will definitely include plus or minus 5a also. Okay, right. So we got that. So let's try to uh, draw the axis. Right? Now, uh, okay, let me call this is A, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, this is A, somewhere here you will have B, okay, very similarly, this is B, okay, so this is A, 2A, 3A, minus a minus 2a and minus 3a so there will be 0 at the center okay let's divide this into four parts 1 uh, 2 3 and 4 right so each one is equally spaced because the that that corresponds to the bit duration t okay i'll mark the t later fine so first one is so i, I what, what i do i'll try to represent the symbols corresponding to that. So the first symbol, this has to be a 0, 0, right? Then when you have 0, 1, you send not minus, so it's minus 2, 0, 0, 0, 1, this is 1, 0, 1. So just look at that, what has been given, you draw that directly. Okay, so that means, so first symbol, you can see that, that is 0, 1. So it starts at minus a, and goes for one bit duration complete. Okay, it comes through here. Now you see the next one is one one. So it has to go all the way from this point, it will pass through this, it will go till this and continues till here. Okay, then From there, it will go down. You see that next one is 0, 0, so it has to come to this level and continues till one bit duration. All right, and the last is once again, this is how much? This is 1, 0, so this has to start from here. It should go up and reach 1, 0, which is here. Okay, then we'll continue like this. this is. So you see, this is initial 0, 1, then you have 1, 1, 0, 0, and 1, 0. So see, four levels have been defined. Right? I also have to show that each uh, bit is going to be having the same duration. Same for this and same for this. So everything will remain same. So this is T, T, capital T and capital T. Okay. Now, right, anyway, so uh, the rest of the terms will definitely remain same. So just now we talked, we, we were talking about the MRA system corresponding to this block, wherein, right, the signal generator part is what is actually important. Other parts are already we have studied. But anyway, let's try to uh, recall what we have studied over here, right? So when we have M different symbols, it gets converted into X of T, right, according to the levels. Then you pass it through the filter, right? So filter has, the transmitting filter has a response HD of F, right? You get the output, will be passed through the channel, has some response HC of F. On the other side, you will receive, right? And pass it through the HR of F, whatever you get as the output, right? Sample it and use a logic device to get the result, right? Using that, you compare it and get the result. 
all right so that's the overall representation of what is called as this whole uh, 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 m array baseband system